Hello and welcome to Code Tutorials. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the dual image with content block, which is part of our key blocks for Gutenberg Premium plugin. With this block, you'll be able to create sections that combine text and visuals without going through the bother of inserting columns and having to adjust them. Additionally, the dual image part of the block's name comes from the possibility of layering two images one over the other. It provides an interesting visual and allows you to use the accompanying options to set sizes, proportions, and more. And you have a lot of range for customizing and styling your text content too. Now, this second example of the dual image with content is combined with the client's carousel block. So, even though it's designed to serve as a full-width page element, this block can easily have other blocks from the key blocks collection nestled within it. Still, whether you choose to use the dual image with content block on its own or combine it with others, you should get to know its options so you can make the most of them. And that's what we're going to do now. Let's head over to the back end. I have a new page that I will be working in. And now I need to add a block to this new page. You can add a new block by clicking on this blue button in the header area. It opens the block selection. There is a search bar at the top and below it you will find an overview of all the blocks you have on your site. That means everything you get with Gutenberg itself as well as the key blocks collection and anything else you may have added. When you're browsing through this list, you'll be able to recognize the key blocks easily. They all have reddish pink icons that make them stand out. This should help you narrow down the block you want more quickly. And once you've found it, simply drag and drop it to add it to the page. So that's one way to add a block. Another way involves clicking on the plus sign button within the page. This will open a pop-up with a search function and a view of my recently used blocks. I have the dual image visible among them, but when you're using the block for the first time, you'll have to search for it. To do that, just start typing its name. And there it is. Click on it to add. All right. And this is what the dual image with content block looks like by default. We have the images on the right and the text on the left. Currently, both are composed of placeholder content that we'll be replacing with our own. Additionally, you might have noticed the plus sign button under the text. It's the same as the one we used to add the dual image with content block to the page. It's here to make it easier for you to add another block within this one, in case you want to. To customize this block, we'll start with a title. You simply need to type in something new into this field and that will replace this text here. Just a sec while I'm typing. Okay. Since this is just a tutorial, I'll be copying the content from one of the examples on the blocks page. But each of you will have your unique content to place here. All right. The next thing we have is this chunk of text. I'm going to replace it with something a lot shorter. Just give me a moment to type it in. Okay, there we go. Next, we have the field for replacing the main image. I'll remove the placeholder one and set something new from my media library. I'll use this, select, and there it is. And with the image, we have a few options for adjusting some of its properties, such as the image size. Now, this is an interesting one because we can change the image size, but the space the image is set to occupy is, in a way, fixed. Let me show you what I mean by this. If I switch the setting to thumbnail, the image will become thumbnail sized, but it has to occupy a much larger space, so it's become blurry. You can create an interesting effect with this, so it's something to keep in mind. Also, we have the custom setting, which allows us to set a specific width and height for the image. However, I selected an image with suitably large dimensions, so I'll simply opt to display it in full size. All right. Next, we have the main image height option. You can input any number of pixels you like here. For the design I have in mind, I'll set 900. As you can see, the increased image height has affected the height of the whole block. This is all part of the plan. Following this, we have the main image responsive height option. We can leave it set to predefined or we can switch it to custom. With the latter, we'll be able to specify the image height for different screen heights. The first field is for laptop screen heights. The one for desktops is actually the main image height option we filled in earlier. Okay, so for this first one, I'll enter 685 pixels as my image height. And all the other fields are for progressively shorter screens, such as MacBook screens, tablets, and mobile phones when set to different orientations. 
so give me a moment while I enter all the custom values I want for my dual image block. Just a second. Alright, that's it. After all that, we have the second image field where we can replace the smaller image that's layered over the main image. So first, I'll delete the placeholder image and then open my media library to pick something new. And that's going to be this one. Select and there's my new image. To go with it, we have another image size option. It works the same as the one we covered for the main image, so I'll just set full size here as well. OK. And under that, we have this small section with the additional CSS classes option. This is where you can create a specific class for this element, and then you can use that class and refer to it when making CSS that would style your dual image block. And those were all the options we had in the first tab, content which means we can move on to the second one, Style. And in here, the options are subdivided into three different tabs for styling different aspects of our block. The first one is for styling the content. Within it, we have the Content Position option. By default, it's set to Content Left from Image, so our text is on the left side. But we can switch it to Content Right from Image, which puts the text on the right side. I'll keep it this way. Next, there's the Alignment. The default setting is to the left, but we can move it to the center or the right. I'm going to return mine to the left. Then we have the Content Width option. We can use it to adjust the width of the space set aside for the text. As you can see, by changing the width value, we can change the text breaks and force the text to fall across multiple rows. I'm happy to keep the default setting for this, so I'll simply reset the option. OK. Following that, there is the Content Padding option. We have four distinct fields for that, so we can set the padding for each side separately. For this, I'll switch to using percentages and set 4.7 for the top. Let me just move this a bit so we can see better. OK. Then 5.2 for the right, 4.3 for the bottom, and 5.2 for the left side padding. The changes are subtle overall, although they might be more noticeable on the sides. Still, the paddings I added will be very helpful for smaller screen displays. OK, moving on. The next option is the content background color. You have this easy to use color picker that makes setting a new color super simple. I have a specific color in mind. In fact, it's pretty close to the default color. And to get the precise shade I want, I'll type in its hex code. There we go. And after the color, we have the second image width option. You can use it to adjust how wide the topmost image will be. You can increase up to the original width of the image you uploaded. And for this, I'll switch to percentages. This will help me keep the ratio between the two images even when they're viewed on smaller screen sizes. And I'll set 70% here. Perfect. That wraps up this first sub-tab, Content. Let's see what we have for the next one, Title. For starters, there's the Title Tag option. You can choose anything from this drop-down. I'm going to switch mine to H1. OK. Then we have the Title Color option. It lets us easily replace the default shade with a new one. I'll reset this as I plan to keep the original color. Next, there's the Title Typography. It contains several different options for adjusting the look of the title. There's Font Family, where we can pick a replacement from the hundreds of available fonts. Then font size, which can be in pixels, ams, rams, or the viewport width. Following that, we have the weight option, with all these possible settings for the font weight. Then the transform option, in case we want to make the title uppercase, lowercase, capitalized, or normal. Next, the style option serves to make the title normal, which is the default setting, italic or oblique. And the decoration option will let us add a line under, over, or through the title text. Under that, we have two options for spacing adjustments, specifically the line height and the letter spacing options. And that's everything we get under typography. After that, our next option is the title margin bottom. With it, we can add more space here under the title. I'm going to reduce it a bit by setting 16 pixels here. OK. And after that, we have the title link underline draw option. It's disabled by default, but if we enabled it, it would create an underline for our title text, provided it was linked. 
The option to add a link is not specific to our dual image with content block. Rather, it's something you get with Gutenberg and can use at any point. Let me demonstrate. I've selected my title text, and with that done, all I need to do is go to the floating options on the left, click on this link icon, and then we'll get a field where we can enter a URL. I'll set a hashtag to mimic a link. Okay. Then, using the title link underline draw option, switch the setting to yes. And there we go. An underline has appeared under my title as it's currently linked text. Alright, let me reset this. I just wanted to show you how the option works, but I don't plan on using it for my design. Okay, there. And that was actually the last of the options for the title. Let's check out those for the text now. Okay, we have the text color here. It has this familiar color picker in case we want to change the color of the text. Then we have another set of typography settings, this time for the text rather than the title. When we open them, we can see all the options are the same as before. Therefore, I won't go into detail on them. I'll just make an adjustment to the font size. It's going to be 20 pixels and I'll set the line height to 29 pixels. And that's it, we can carry on. After the typography, we have the text max width option. It's a bit like the content width option from earlier, except this one won't affect the title, only the text. So using it, we can limit the width of the space for the text. Now, my current display is wide enough for this not to play much of a role, but the text max width is an option that can be useful for adjusting displays on smaller screens. In that case, I recommend you use percentages as your unit of measure. Okay. And our last option here is the text margin bottom. It's used to add more space under the text. But for me, I already have this whole expanse of empty space because my text is pretty short. So if I start moving the slider here, nothing visible happens because of that existing space. And that's it. There is only the advanced tab left. The options here are something you get with every one of the key blocks for Gutenberg, and they serve to set how an individual block will look and act on the page. All these options are undoubtedly useful as they can help you adjust the block positioning, background border, and more, they affect blocks as a whole. They aren't specific to the dual image with content block, so we won't be covering them in this tutorial. I'll hit update now to save my work. We covered all the relevant options for the dual image with content block and explained how they all work. As you've seen, it's all incredibly simple and it takes only moments to set up. And even with all that simplicity, this block leaves a lot of room to be creative and display your content in its best light. We hope you found this video tutorial on the dual image with content block helpful. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions after watching this video, please drop us a line in the comment section below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about any new tutorials and theme guides. Thank you for watching.